designer, Huggy Taylor from Huggy Taylor Designs here on El Paseo. I can't wait for her to tell you a little bit about your business. Yeah, so we're a design studio and we do everything from small renovations to full construction, new construction, and we work um, mostly residential. Okay. And um, yeah, this is our little studio. It's 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 a, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's me and two other girls. We have Salome and Thea. Mm -hmm. And we're our own little team here. Yeah. And how long have you been here? Here in this studio, we've been here for almost two years. Okay. okay. Almost. Almost. Yeah. almost. And, and how long have you had the business, the interior design business? Um, so I was, I was asking myself that the other day because that's a little tricky. So. Um, technically, I, I left, I did hair for 13 years and I left and, and that was about six years ago. Mm -hmm. But so I guess technically you can say six years, but when I left, I first went into just home flipping. Oh, and I okay. loved the interior design, but I was too nervous to call myself like an interior designer yet. Mm -hmm. I was really like nervous to work with clients. I didn't feel confident. So I was like, I'm just going to do flipping because I can, you know, like I don't have clients and nobody's sure. going to. You Talk know, to you do so much pressure, yes. Yeah. But slowly, as the more I start posting things, the more I shared, like, and I got more inquiries, like real ones. And so then I was like, oh, okay, maybe I could do it. Maybe I am a designer, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of like how it started rolling into it. So I would say officially working with clients like four, four and a half years. Okay, yeah. Okay, and so that's a really interesting thing that, that moment where you're like, I'm not really that good, or I'm not an interior designer, to the moment you're like, I'm actually really good at this, <laughs> and I'm going to make money doing that. Yeah. So, so was there a specific moment where you thought, okay, I, yeah, this is happening, and I'm going to put my, my all my energy into it? Um, I think uh, uh, one of my very, very first projects, like real projects, which was like a kitchen design, and the client just let me do whatever I wanted, and you know, I made like a buck from it, and it didn't even matter, because sure. you know, I was like, so excited somebody was like letting me even design their house and when it was done and we took photos I remember looking around I'm like oh my gosh like I can't believe I did this by myself and I'm like okay maybe I can do a little more yeah. and then I, I felt I start feeling like okay I think I can like really get behind the interior design title you know right, what I mean? right. so that's kind of how slowly I got into it and then I had a my next like big project it was a client that let me do his whole house and he trusted me to do everything and wow. that was like oh my gosh like that was like a whole nother level and then I really that really boosted my confidence and that was uh, right around 20 20 2021 20, okay because that's a big deal it's right a huge deal. it's a huge deal for somebody so first of you a hundred percent because well like we were talking about when we walked in here it feels so relaxing and calming and and I'm sure when you have a client, they want to feel a certain type of way when you walk into a house. And when they're like, I trust you, just do it, that's got to be even a little extra pressure. Yeah, it, will, it definitely was, but at the same time, it was so flattering. Oh, you know, 100%. Super flattering. And um, once that project was done, I was like, wow. Like, I kind of, like, you know, was surprised myself like uh, that happened. And starting from there, I was like, okay, I feel really confident taking on almost anything right because yeah so that's kind of where okay I love that thank you so hair before so obviously you're creative you like to create and make things beautiful thank you <laughs> what how, how did you stop doing that and decide you know, what, what was that transition like so um uh, we did you know I did hair for 13 years since I was pretty much just leaving uh, high school mm -hmm. and then uh, but my dad and my brother are contractors builders you know so I've been in that industry my whole entire life and um, so uh, I guess it was like about six years ago or so, uh, my husband and I got our first actual fixer upper mm -hmm. by ourselves. And during that process, I was still doing hair and I remember just like running back and forth and back and forth like between clients to meet contractors and to meet like subcontractors and things like that. And during that process, I was like so happy. Like it just made me so happy. I'm like, I feel like it's in my genes. Like my dad does it, my brother does it. Like I feel like it made me so happy. And I pretty much cut hair cold turkey almost. Really? Like, it was like very, I felt very, very strongly about it for a couple of months. I felt like I started thinking about it. I told my husband, I told my parents, I was like, I, I feel the calling to just leave hair and do this. Like right. do design, do home renovations. This is what I want to do. This is what makes me happy. I mean, when I was a kid, like I went to Home Depot with my dad and like on the weekend, <laughs> that's what I did, you know? So I feel like, I feel like right at home, you know? Right. So that's, right. that's kind of how the transition went. I left hair and then I started running into flipping to yeah. a little bit more design and more and more. Awesome. 
so so you know any pair any business right like you have to build your clientele so you spent 13 years in one industry building your clientele you now know pretty much what you're making every week it's very consistent so changing that up entirely means building a new clientele building a new portfolio and then once again getting to the point where people are like i trust you yeah so that's a really big accomplishment yeah it's, it was huge i mean leaving hair i i made really good money doing hair sure. i really did every day every month i knew how much i was going to make pretty much and um i was so confident in it and i i loved it it was great um but yes when i left um uh, we were definitely poor for a minute sure. not gonna lie because we went from you know making a certain amount of money we had our savings but like we just put everything in and went like we, our gut feeling told us to, which was home flipping. And it was really hard for a little while, sure. really, really hard, but we went through it and I'm like, so glad we did. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, so maybe poor financially, but not like mentally or no, like, like, you know what I mean? Like you were yes, about. like we were, I was still so happy to do what I did. Yeah. Yes, it was stressful. We're like, okay, like we really need to sell this flip because if not, we're going to get in trouble, you right. know? Right. But at the same time, like, it just felt like right we're doing the right thing still yeah. and just kept doing it and then um you know we just kept saying scared money don't make money right. like we That's just right. kept like doing it and um we went through the hump and it was, yeah. it was good it was yeah. good it's, it's a good challenge to yeah experience something like yes that. Yeah. exactly yeah. so you have clients that have said i trust you do whatever you want do you have clients who are like so this is what i want um yes and no oh, yes, yes. So um, I have had clients like that, and I, I appreciate that mm -hmm. for sure. I, I can respect it and um, understand it because it is your home. Sure. Um, now we're just a little bit more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Choosy, I guess okay. you can say, okay. with what clients we take. Sure. Um, a little bit more specific with clients just because I feel like when I'm 100% we collaborate with our clients if, if they if they're like we want something like this but please you know give us your input but if somebody's very very specific then I feel like we can really be as creative as we'd like to be okay. and we don't do the best job we could be right. so um, we we've had like clients that like knew exactly what they wanted but then I feel like then you really don't need us for that to be honest true so I really like to like be more collaborative right but, you know i think that our best project is when like clients were like i don't want to say 100 percent hands off but mostly hands off right. you know we give we always give our clients like um at least two choices of everything and like so they can choose and if they don't like this we come back with another one and usually that works out great and then we create something beautiful like yeah that. yeah and has um a client ever said uh, I really want this and stuck with it. it. Maybe they gave you the carte blanche like you could create, but they had an idea for something really crazy and you weren't sure about how it was going to come together. Um, uh, it happened before. <laughs> it has happened before, yes. But it's very rare. Like, it's very rare, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, because yeah, usually like they hire us because they trust like, sure. what we have to say So um, and our judgment and everything. So I think Thank goodness, you know, right. they went with our uh, suggestions most yeah. of the time. Well, I mean, I ask that because, some, you know, sometimes you go into houses and, and you're just like, what is this? Yes. Like, who thought this up and then, like, put it together? Um, so, you know, and, and sometimes people are like, oh, I had a designer over and they did this. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's so it's just really yeah. amazing. Yeah. I know. And because our name is on it, I feel like it's really important for me to for us to make sure everything is right. really, really good. So before we even take on a project, we go through a lot of things mm -hmm. and we talk to a client. We walk yeah, through, talk you know, about that process. Yes. How it gets from A to C. So let's say we get an inquiry in and I go through that. Then usually it's a phone call. We fill each other out. We talk about it because they have to like me just as much as I have to like them. It's a relationship. Yeah, it is a relationship. I'm working in their home usually. So that's very personal, and if we we feel like we're like our energies align, that's like super big for me, and we were vibing, then we go to the next process. You should uh, come in, we'll walk through and everything, and um, you know once we're good on that, you know sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time, if I'm already walking through, 99% it's gonna work right, out. Right. Right. And then um, from that point on, then I send a proposal, then we. Move forward with a 
kickoff meeting, and which that meeting is, uh, they let us know what is their must have, must not have, their likes, their, you know, what kind of finish they like, do they like gold, do they like, you know, right. black, or, you know, all kinds of things, the, what kind of stone they like, what kind of stone they don't like. We go through all of that, right. and then we start, start the actual design process. Once we do the design process, then we invite them back in here and we have a full presentation. And um, once we have the presentation, they let us know, yes, this is all great, amazing, mm -hmm. or they're like, we love this, but we want to change this, this, and this, and that. Right. So then we have a few revisions to make, and then um, that kind of is the design process. Yeah. And then we start ordering, and then going into eventually um, uh, install day. You yeah. know? So obviously it's not that fast. It sure. Takes, I'm sure it could take close. from a few months to a few years. Yeah, and, and right, now, right. And so, do you use your, construct, do you use your family to do the install? Does that happen as well? No, uh, sometimes I'll use my dad. It just depends because he has his own project sure. and his own, you know, so um, I don't always use him. And my brother is actually in LA okay. and he does a lot of work in LA and Malibu and he doesn't do actually client projects anymore. Mm -hmm. He's just a developer, so he does really amazing, very, very high-end homes that he builds and he's incredible. Oh, so, awesome. but he does not, um, he doesn't work here anymore, so sure. I don't get that, but I always like call him with questions and he gives me like um, suggestions and things like that because he's been doing it his whole entire life too. Right, it's good to have family members to bounce those things off who are in this basically the same business. Yes. They see a lot of things too and they know how it's built from the ground up. You just put the beauty in it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's so nice because I also like to know like the behind. Like, sure. Hey, if we're installing this, like, what kind of like structure do we need here, and what do you, you know, like, we need to make sure that this actually works. So, right. So many times I will call my brother, like, oh, if we do this, like, does this, you know, just for example, like, whatever. Yeah. Maybe. So it's really nice to have him and my dad. So what about a project where you were like, man, I don't know how to do that. It's something really big. I, you know, some sort of. Uh, feature in a home and you were able to pull it off like what what's a, a project like that um i can't think on the top of my head uh well no i can't think of it i mean you just figure it out really <laughs> so like <laughs> one of our projects for example the murata project mm -hmm. um which is up in the murata mm -hmm. um i had vision for the whole mantle to be like a floating mantle like out of stone mm -hmm. but i didn't want anything underneath it or anything like that well it's like thousands of pounds. I mean, it was very, very heavy and it's very, very long. And I'm like, how am I going to pull this off? Well, I mean, after calling different masonry guys sure. and different, um, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, framers and things like that. You just call and ask and bring people in and you, you find a way when you want something done, you find a way. Sure. Sometimes I will call my brother because he's very good with like structural stuff. So a lot of times I will call him and be like, Hey, I'm looking to do this. Like any suggestions here? And oftentimes he has them. Yeah. But, um, every everything is like different, you know. Every situation is different. But that particular one, you just have to find. Keep calling tradesmen that are comfortable with doing that, right. you know, and bring them in and see what see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. So what about like trends? Do you find that it's important to know what's trendy, or do you really feel like style is something that translates over no matter what the trends are? Um, I I always feel like. Like some trends are nice, maybe like little things, like little, little, like for example, for decor or something like that. I wouldn't do like super trendy, like um, something that is like a tile or anything like that because you're not gonna want to change that. It's into two more years. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think it's it's nice to to stay up with the trends and know, like if it's a little bit, like if there is like certain. Um, fabric that is trending. If you get it in a pillow, sure. that's totally fine, you know, right. I don't see anything wrong with that. But I really love timeless and that's why we do a lot of neutrals and a lot yeah. of stones and uh, you know things like that. Um, I love timeless, I love vintage, I love mixing the two, you yeah. know, that is like my favorite thing to do. Right. And um, to me that's not something that's gonna go out of style. Um, Really, yeah. but you can always add a little layer, fresh it up, yeah. and do different things to it when it's yeah. mostly neutral. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You can throw like even a neutral home. You can always throw some color in there. If somebody's like, I need some more, something more. But then we've had that before. Like I love neutral, but I need a little bit. So no problem. We'll do some greenery, some flowers, some books with like a little bit more uh, color. Right. Um, may not be like red, green, and yellow, but maybe like really pretty, like um, really pretty tones, like muted tones. 
do you find yourself going into other people's houses, just like friends or whatever, and being like, this is what I would do here, <laughs> and this is what I would do Unfortunately, here? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? Yes, but it's not always like a bad thing. There's so many times, like I go to friends' house, and I'm like, oh, I want to talk to you. Like I'm thinking this and this. I'm like, sure. Like yeah, let's talk about it. You know. Yeah. So, like, I can't really shut it off because it's my passion, you know what I mean? It's not something like, okay, it's five o'clock, I'll come down, you yeah, know? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I do, but it's not like, I never have gone to somebody's house and like, oh, like, that's really bad because, I mean, I get never. it, like, we're all, all of the time, but, uh, um, you know, I, not at all because even my house is not perfect at all, you sure. know, but we just make it as nice as we can, right? Yeah, comfortable. Yeah, I make it all, make it comfortable, make it, you, you know, you're walking in, like one thing makes you excited to see if it's like a pretty, um, you know, entryway table. You're like, oh, come home, you know, pretty candle. Yeah, I love that. So, um, any challenges like when you first started that you were surprised about? Um, I, I think my the biggest challenge when I first started is how much like clients love to see visuals. Uh, um, clients really love to see renderings and things like that. Well, I don't do renderings, me personally. My team, my amazing <laughs> team does. Thank Everybody God. needs a good team. <laughs> yes, but I, I'm i just not a techie person, and to be honest, I just don't have the patience to sit down and learn. So like, you know, it's just, you. I feel like you either have it or you don't. Like, I don't know, for me, it was so never true. something I was good at. So I've noticed that that's something that, that was when I, you know, was looking for something, I'm like, I really need somebody that can do renderings, and we, uh, obviously, like, um, elevations and things like that. That was like my main thing that, because you know, I would do presentations and presentation and boards. You see it. I see you it. See oh, it. Trust me, it's gonna be so good, right? And that's why, like, the first couple of clients that I had before I had a team, and they trusted me just by me saying, "Trust me, it's gonna look good." <laughs> that was very meaningful. Sure. But now, when we're taking on new construction and huge projects, like it's very important to them and to everybody to see a visual, you right? Know? Because that your ability to see that and imagine it is not something that people have. Yeah. Because yes. I'm like, you know, my fiance is actually really good at it, and he'll be describing things in detail, and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then it'll happen, and I'm like, oh. So, so like, I can yeah. imagine yes. that there's probably a huge win for you to be able to provide that. It is. Yeah. Like, I mean, even for example, just to be totally candid, like I had a client that hired me in person. It's like, oh, I'm okay with no visuals. It's fine. And then um, I, I told them in, from the beginning, I, I do not provide renderings, I don't have that. Um, and that, and you know, we started the process and I picked out some materials and things like that. And then he's like, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know. I really need to see a visual. I really need to see rendering. Yeah. So I had to let that project go. Oh. And we were very good terms. Sure. Everything was fine. I understood him, he understood me. But it was just something that I couldn't provide for him at the time. At the time, I didn't even know anybody that I can hire to do sure. it. So it was very early on, but so then I was like, okay, that's not for everyone to just picture it in their head, right? You know, right. or for me to sketch something silly on paper, yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah. that's a good that's a good value add for you. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, how do people reach out to you if they're interested in hiring you? So um, on my website, HippieTaylorDesign.com. Um, so then we have an inquiry page, okay. and usually that's how I get all my inquiries. Um, a lot of them come from Instagram, actually. That's um, literally what everyone says. Yes. <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible, yeah. And a lot of inquiries come from Instagram, but if they message me, I just send them my um, my website to like a direct link because then it's more organized. It comes to my email. Sure. I can keep, you know, Watch have it. a little bit more information. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, yeah, it's pretty and you simple. you do small to big you do, and everything in between. Yes, we okay. do pretty much everything. Um, as of right now, we're concentrating on a little bit larger projects because that's just, um, like every project takes a lot of time, even sure. if it's small projects, sure. it takes a lot of time. So right now we do have several larger projects that we really enjoy, but it doesn't mean if it's a right fit, then okay. we would take smaller stuff. But if something that is gets us excited and something that like we're on the same, you know, same aesthetic and like I feel like it will be a, a good match, then definitely consider it. All right. Best advice anybody's ever given you? Oh, well, but I would just say like, I, I would say truly try it, go for it, even though it's really, really scary. Yeah. And I would at least try it. If it fails, at least there's no, right. there's no regret. Um, 
that's that's kind of how I went into it. I said the worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work out, and um, at least I can say I tried it. Because yeah. if not, then I would like dwell because on I mean, it. I'm sure you made a lot of money on the hairstylist, right? Yeah. And you enjoyed it in the moment. Yeah. But what if you had never tried this? Yeah. Where would I can't imagine doing hair now? Right. <laughs> so so you're you're absolutely right. 